Welcome back to another episode on the Budget Build Miata, presented by Nankang Motorsports and Race Pack. Today we're installing a roll bar. When we first decided to build the Miata, we were looking at different options for safety, and it just so happened that the guys from Boffy Racing in the UK reached out to us and said, hey, We've got some interesting options for you in terms of roll bars. They sell a full line of roll bars from a company called GC Fabrications, also out of the UK, who make very nice looking roll bars. This is their GCR roll bar. It's the most uh, race oriented of their, of their four point solutions, you could say. It's got obviously this big X brace in the back. It's got an integrated harness bar here. And it, it does intrude a little bit more into the seating a range of motion than their other bars which are designed to sit up on top uh, on the top shelf but this is considered their strongest uh, roll bar and we decided we wanted to go with the, the safest setup we possibly could. There's, they also have these optional door bars which I think are pretty cool as you can see they bolt to the lower mount here and run down to the front side sill area but we're not 100% sure if we're going to be able to fit these in because having taken a look at the Recaro pole positions in there there's just not a lot of room to go down the side of those seats. So we'll do the best we can to fit these up, but if we can't, then uh, the reason we opted for these is really they provide a lot more chassis stiffness. By stiffening up that large door opening, and obviously with an open top, this does provide a lot more chassis stiffening. So apparently guys that who run these say you, you really can feel the difference in chassis stiffness by running these. We are gonna get down to business of installing this bar, which is uh, fully MSA certified. So MSA is, the Motorsport Association in Great Britain. They're like the sanctioning body. They're like the UK's SECA. So this bar is built to meet those specifications, which will meet and exceed uh, rollover protection standards here in North America as well. So this bar will pass any tech inspection, whether it's SECA, NASA, European, you name it. And believe it or not, it was actually very affordable to ship this here from the UK. Had we shipped a bar, say, from California, it would have cost more than it cost to ship this bar from the UK to us here in the Toronto area. So for all you Canadians who are looking at roll bar options, I think it really is worth looking at Boffy Racing and GC Fabrications because it's a very affordable way to get a very high quality roll bar for, for your Miata. This bar fits the NA and the MB1 and MB2. We also have roll bars for all kinds of other stuff. As you guys just saw, we had to remove the carpet from the rear parcel shelf area, as well as a piece of tin that trims along the front here. And in doing so, we unearthed some mold and what looks like some, not mouse droppings, but like mouse nests, basically. Yeah. You can see how they could get up maybe through this grommet here. It's a fairly large opening. And the mold stinks. It's really not pleasant, so. All right, so what I've got here is I think it's like a interior cleaning gun that I bought off of Amazon. It's pretty much like a spray foam gun and uses compressed air, a little bit of uh, vinegar water in here. And it, this is supposed to kill the mold actually exceptionally well. This is meant more for interior carpets than, uh, than the metal, but it works well as well. You can watch and see how quickly, like look how moldy this is. This is yeah, kind of disgusting. Yeah. And then uh, with this tool here, it'll just take it right off. Like, look at that. Look at the difference there, right? Impressive, yeah. So, really impressive. So, I'm just going to do a little bit more here, and I think we could officially call this thing deodorized of mold. We are on to modifying the chassis here to fit up that roll bar, and the first thing that we need to do is remove this little lip here. And what I've done is bust out the spot weld cutter kit. As you can see, it does a good job. Like, we could have just cut this off here. However, this, to me, is a, a much cleaner and nicer way of removing pieces of metal that have been spot welded on. Okay. Oh, yeah, wow, there that. you go, look at that. 
Came off right. nice and clean. Yeah, super clean. I didn't drill through the metal on the other side, which is good. The next step here is we are going to have to cut these two areas out on both sides in the back there so we can fit the roll bar hoop into the back. There we go. Give the Come old, on. The old Come wiggle. On. Yeah. Let's get that last piece off. Okay. There's one and there is two pieces almost uh, in the area that I marked out. <laughs> Now that the sheet metal has been cut to fit the rear arms of the bar in place, you can see we've uh, been able to drop the bar in place and it just sits along the sort of front edge of the shelf here and then the rear mounted points go back in there. You can see there's a bunch of wiring in here that is kind of tricky. It's tight, but we managed to like fit it up in the gap on the outside of the, this post. I think you could also maybe work it on the inside of the post if you were able to like loosen those wires up a bunch, but this way I think should work fine for us. So now we need to I think position the bar using these upper seatbelt mounting bolts. Yeah, that'll these sort guys of uh, right here. define the position for it, and then we can start marking the holes for the rear base plates. Drill those holes, backing plate in, in them from underneath, and we'll have our rears bolted in, and then we can get to work on the fronts. <laughs> So we've just dropped our GC fabrication supplied hardware through these holes back here. These are all graded to the right strength for a roll bar like this. And the plastic trim work that we did turned out great. Everything fitted perfectly as far as the roll bar goes. So we trimmed this part out here, trimmed the tops of the towers off, and we trimmed along the back here as well. You'll notice though that that metal ridge that we, tr that we took off with the uh, spot weld remover I'm not sure we actually need to do that. I realized that we were following the instructions on GC Fabrications Facebook page for one of their simpler bars that doesn't mount down here. It actually sits up in here. The, the main hoop sits up in here. So it's not as wide a bar. This is obviously more of their race oriented roll bar. So it's as wide as it can be. I still think it was to our advantage to take that out though, because this rear bar still fits very tight in this area. So for passing it in through here, it might not be possible to do it without removing that, that lip but it might be possible if you drop it in on the right angle. So not 100% sure we needed to do that step, but frankly, I have no regrets because it did make the job easier and who cares what that looks like. We're gonna put the carpet kit and all that back in here anyway, so not a big deal. Underneath, the one little quick thing we gotta do is remove this little panel. And now we have access to our three bolts here. So what I'm gonna do is slide our panel underneath, get it lined up. I've got the right one. I just guessed, I think I do. Here we are. Get it on there. Now we'll get these nuts in place with washers. We are down to the home stretch here. I just bolted up the seat belts and I love that they integrate the factory uh, belt into the system here so you can still drive around on the street with your three point belt. And the last thing we gotta do is drill a couple more holes, four to be exact here. So this is gonna be the easy part. I don't have to mark anything. Just gotta send it. looking good. I am stoked on the safety upgrade and the chassis stiffness upgrade that we've just made by installing this bar and all in all I think the install went very well. I think we could have trimmed less sheet metal out of the back area for the rear arms. They kind of recommended cutting out a fairly large area. A and five and a half by four and a like, half but we could have done like got a real two precise by about one. It. Yeah. I think they probably recommend that just to ease installation. You know with the base plate you can kind of make, drop it in from different angles so and frankly, we've added so much chassis stiffness from this that cutting out a bit of extra sheet metal back there will have no impact whatsoever. So carpet fit in beautifully. Yeah, I love like, how OEM it looks. Yeah, you have to OEM do a couple plus. of little re relief cuts back there to yeah. make it sit nice down, but it looks great. So 
I think now we're going to put the seats in and have a look at those door bars. I should say, though, that I had a quick chat with Grant from GC Fabrications, and he mentioned that those door bars are confirmed to work with like uh, Sparco Sprint seats and some other smaller seats, but he was unsure of how they would fit with the Recaro pole positions, which are a little bit bigger. So we're not confident they're going to fit, but we'll try to fit them. And Before dropping our Recaro seat back into the car, I went ahead and did some modifications here to the seat rails to try to get this seat to move over more inboard because we were having problems with it hitting the door card. And as you can see, I sectioned out a bit of the mount on this side. And on this side here, I went a little overboard. I don't think I needed to add this much uh, space here. But anyways, I, I did this just to make sure that we can move the seat as far over as we can. And it may give us just enough room where we don't have to cut or destroy the door card. And actually, it'll give us a nicer seating position anyway. So let's get this bolted in. We'll see how it fits. And then we can uh, put in those side bars, which... <laughs> I don't know, DP, I'm not sure they're gonna fit, but we're gonna find out anyways. Okay, here we go. Let's put the steering wheel in, and wow, good amount of space here. And before the seat would really contact our door, but now, look at that. Closing and that's because I've obviously moved it over. It has a little bit of contact, but actually the, the door card's gonna wear in in this area pretty nicely. So at first I was worried we were gonna have to cut it, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. Look at that, it closes with that. Little effort, and uh, we are good, DP. Yeah. I really like the seating position here. It's, it's tight. It's a Miata, so it's tight. I'm not going to uh, lie about that. But um, the other thing is, so we looked at the door bar, and I'll, I'll grab it, but it just doesn't look like we're going to have much space in this area to fit it. Uh, obviously, we would have to get rid of the door card for sure. That's a given. But um, even more so, the way the seat protrudes out this way, and the way the, door, the, the bar runs, it would contact right in this area here. So we'd have to do a bunch of modifications, which I don't think we're gonna get into. Now that we've got the driver's seat in a position that we're both happy with, it's time to add some more safety in the form of these five-point harnesses from Corbeau. These obviously have three-inch straps, substrap, lap belts, shoulder belts, and you'll see them more as we install them. But we sourced these from our friends at Marcor Automotive. They are a large wholesale distributor of performance parts here in Canada. So if you're looking for Corbeau or Kony or Eibach or even WeatherTech, they are your source for all that stuff. As a matter of fact, you can buy the stuff through us since we have an account with them, or you can walk into their storefront in Burlington, which is called Northern Performance. So the challenge now is to figure out how to install these. And I think for the lap belts, we'll be able to use factory pickup points. The shoulder straps, we're just gonna wrap to the harness bar, which is nicely integrated into our roll bar. So really it's gonna come down to adding an attachment point for the substrap. So we're gonna get on with that job now, which means pulling out this seat, which we've just fitted so carefully. Progress has been made here. As you can see, Pete has bolted the substrap to the floor here. It's worth noting that these core boat belts came with the bolt-in style brackets rather than the snap-in style, which we're more accustomed to using with like an eye bolt. But I guess the beauty of this is it's a more permanent install, isn't it? Once it's in, it's in and you don't have the space used up by an eye bolt. So I'm sure there's some advantages to this style versus the eye bolt. Snapping obviously is easier to remove. Anyways, uh, sub belts in. I've already installed the shoulder straps based on the lengths that I made them on the passenger side, which we tested on Pete, so we know they're about the right length. Just wrap them around the harness bar using the correct technique, which if you want more information on, you can go to teamvalvoline.com and search for Speed Academy harness install, because we actually shot a video for Valvoline on exactly how to do this job. Moment of truth here. Let's see how these belts come together. They're locked in. Look at that. Nice and tight. We should mention um, our side belts here we put in the factory pickup locations, so where the seat belts go. So they're, uh, they're in there really well. And uh, we've got the old uh, jock strap here <laughs> that I didn't tighten too hard for no. obvious reasons. We should mention the, the crotch strap. You did use a backing plate on the underside. I did, I did, yes. So yes. That's, that's, yep. that's important that's, to do. That's key there. And, so uh, what do you think, GP? You're looking good, man. Yeah, man, this feels nice and tight. Looks I'm like you've got gonna, decent headroom. Maybe it's time for the old uh, anywhere. For the SCCA spec broomstick test here. Hold this over your head, PT. Oh, we don't have a helmet on, but still, I think. Uh, you can see, you got what? a lot of headroom there. A lot of space. Yeah, you got like four or five inches. Good, so good. You'll be plenty clear with a helmet on. Wicked. Well. Oh, you know what? The one thing I want to show too is we've actually integrated the factory seatbelt. Oh, so yeah. 
if we pull this. I kind of tucked it in there. Yeah, no, it's okay. We we just uh, have to fight space constraints here, but you got to like do it this way here. It's all right. There you go. There we go, like that. And then what we can do is look at this cruising on the street. Get my belt down here. It's kind of tight, but I did fit the the seatbelt buckle in there. There you go. Look at that. So obviously I have to move these belts here, but we can go cruising on the street and, uh, and still have our three point belts. So for comfort, we are good. For safety, we are good on the racetrack. I think that is officially a wrap. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the notifications bell. Before you subscribe, before you like, hit that notification bell because it keeps you uh, up to date on all our videos.